All right, guys, the next thing I want to talk to you about is creating a frame and what is a frame in Adobe InDesign. So if you look right here, I just left click on this is my actual document for my portfolio. These are frames. These are the containers that hold your images and text. So there's text frames and there's picture frames or image frames that I always like to think of picture frames because, you know, I think about like in this example, a picture frame contains something. It's supposed to hold something. So going here to my actual document that I showed you earlier, I am going to go ahead and create that first initial page. Okay. And so this is how I tend to do it. Other people might do it differently. This is just what works for me. So when we look at the toolbar over here, a couple things that you're going to want to use, like when I hover over it, you're going to get the name of the tool. Okay. Selection tool. I tend to use that. And you can see a keyboard shortcut when I hover with my mouse or cursor, see, and it'll say the name of the tool and then it'll give you a letter at the end of it or some kind of key that's giving you the keyboard shortcut. And I use those a lot. It makes things faster. So these two I tend to use a lot. I'm not going to go through all the tools. This is just so you can get started with your portfolio. Um, type tool, I use that a lot. So I can create a text frame or to type in it. Okay, um, then here is a rectangular frame tool. Okay, I'm gonna use that a bit, okay? And then I do use the hand tool and sometimes I'll use this color scheme as well, okay? And then I have my actual fill and my stroke. I'll tell you more about that later. But let's talk about adding the frame of it. And another thing I recommend, if you are designing your portfolio, go and Google. Like, just Google people's portfolios. Because there's a ton of illustrators out there. They'll have PDFs that they're going to send out to potential clients. Nowadays, because of COVID, this is what I've learned, people are a little bit hesitant to take in mailed. And I always sent out postcards. That was my main way of getting work, um, was either getting featured somewhere with my illustration work online or mailing out postcards. So now there's kind of this restriction on art directors because they just don't know. Some will, but most everybody wants things sent digitally, okay, via email. And they want it done in a particular way. So you need to check to see what are the requirements for this client if they have a submissions area. But another thing is, like I said, look at some good designs, look at some poor designs, figure out what do you like. Do you like a vertical or do you like horizontal? Everybody's different. And you know, I feel like for me, because it's about the illustration work, so if I go back to the side, it's about highlighting my images. I'm not really pushing so much that I, I can do graphic design, but for this, this is about my illustration work. So I want my images to be on the bigger side. I want to have my logo there and things like that. So just be aware, look at other people's designs and figure out what do you like about them? What do you not like about them? So doing that research will help you a lot in setting up your plans for your portfolio. I'm going to base mine on what I currently have, but then I'm going to make it into a vertical format. Okay, so moving on. So I'm going to go ahead and create a actual rectangular frame. So this is the picture frame that I talked about. I'm going to left click on it and I'm going to click and drag from that bleed area. Now when I hold this, I know I want three images at the top. This is a little keyboard shortcut. Um, I am going to click on my arrow key. See what happens to three. And they're proportional. They're the same size. And when I click and I'm holding. So this was hard for my students. They would let go of it. And then they're like, oh, I let go of it. So you can always, so if I let go of it, I'm not happy. I was shortchanged myself. Command Z and it undoes it. Or Control Z if you are on a PC. So let's do this again. Going back to the rectangular frame, I want to create those picture frames to put my images. So I'm going to start from my bleed because I do want it to bleed off the edge. If I don't want it to bleed, I could start here in my live area, um, but I'm going to have it bleed off. So I left click and I hold my left click on my mouse and then I do the right arrow key, how it splits it, and the third. Now if I wanted six images, I could hit six frames, hit the up, look at, I get six, but I don't want that. Now if I want to go down, I do the bottom and then it minuses it. And the same thing if I go to the left arrow key, it can reduce the number of frames. But I want three, I know I want three, and I think because of the proportion of those images, I think I'm gonna go ahead 
and drop it here, okay? So that's my guess. And then because to balance out, because this is so vertical and I have so much space here, I am going to, I have my actual selection tool. I'm gonna to select it and see how all of these anchor points are highlighted right here. It means I have everything selected, okay? Now, I can actually group these together and I can copy and paste this. I think I'm gonna put three of the images down here and actually, you know, we'll skip grouping. Let's just go ahead and go to edit up in the menu bar. So this is my menu bar. I'm gonna to go to edit and I'm gonna hit copy or you can hit command C. I'm gonna to go to edit and I'm gonna hit the paste. Okay, see, and then they're down here. And all I have to do is I just left click and hold and drop those frames to the bottom. If something doesn't line up, I can just move it again. All right, so I'm good to go and I've just added my frames. So that's how you would use the rectangle tool click on that, click and drag to create your frame, and this is what will hold your images, okay? I'm going to go back to my selections tool, and if, like I said, if you accidentally make a mistake, you can always hit Command Z or Control Z. And now it, it's time to hit Save. Now you can go to File and hit Save, or I hit Command S, okay? All right, going on to the next tutorial, okay? So.